As a British Iranian journalist and photographer, he lives in Austria and has, among other things, researched migration story in Greece for the magazine RE Europe. Please welcome Daniel Harper. You will forgive me as I look at my notes, as my speech is, uh, my speech is not as well remembered as I thought. I've been thinking about identity a lot recently, whether that's because I have been living away from my own home country for the past two years, or that same home country has decided to leave the European Union, or because, like many of you in this room, I grew up in a culturally diverse household. I can't say for sure, but when I told my friends I was going to be speaking at this event, the irony wasn't lost on them. A British person asked to give a speech at a European forum in Switzerland <laughs> about what Europe he wants to see. As I have spoken with many of you in this room, I found that all these people from different backgrounds, with different interests, different professions, I see that the identity of a European is difficult to grasp. Like this room, this continent is varied. And it's hard to place what common identity we all share, and that what makes us all European. But we are European. I sometimes ask the question when I'm traveling, just for fun, about where Europe ends, just to see where people's limits and lines are. For some people, especially those in the West, the borders stop at Poland. Others, Ukraine is European, but Russia, no. And Georgia and, Ar Georgia and Armenia, well. The definition, as you can see, is quite fluid. Do the stateless in Europe count? Refugees like the ones being pushed and pulled between borders like Belarus and Poland, Greece and Turkey, are they European? If a child who would have grown up to live, to study, and contribute to Europe, dies on the boat ride here with his family. Is that a European fatality? The more I think about the borders on the map, the more I feel they're used not to define a national people, but to keep people out. As climate change accelerates and the global south becomes increasingly affected, by droughts, sea level rise, and other ecological disasters, climate refugees will look to Europe, to us, for aid, for solution, for shelter. When you hear my accent, you'll probably hear that I'm British. And Brexit or not, I am European. However, going forward, I would like to think of myself as more interconnected than that. I know that there's a better way for Europe and the rest of the world to cooperate than the way we're seeing things happen now. The Europe I want now is empathetic, critical, and doing something what we all wish wasn't happening on the periphery of our continent. Thank you very much.